Hello everyone and welcome to another video. What I have on the bench uh, today is um, a Sinclair QL with several problems. The missing key is the least I can think of right now. I have uh, already replaced uh, more than three keys already. The uh, power uh, is right around the circuit but I get a blurry white picture which is an indication according to my experience that there is something wrong with the RAM um, because I've been uh, replacing RAM chips for QLs in the past and it was this whitish or greenish um, pattern on the screen almost every time so the first indication and my the, the first uh, thing that uh, came uh, to my mind is that we have a RAM issue um, without further uh, delay I have uh, removed the PCB from the case and checked the issue. Luckily it's the issue 6 which came out uh, to replace the previous issue 5 which uh, used to have uh, several issues with uh, ULA and everybody remembers that from the announcement to the delivery of the QL to the buyers has been there there been many delays back then it was almost a joke um, not a funny joke for the buyers though now back to our problem um, as I said the whitish uh, greenish um, kind of pattern like this the uh, blank screen is an indication of a RAM failure uh, it's almost uh, what uh, we can say is, is happening with all the colorful squares uh, appearing on the screen for the ZX Spectrum I noticed that there was a RAM chip um, changed the replaced uh, in the past uh, and it's now socketed um, so the first one I got out that one and the same happens uh, if I uh, put a new one it's in uh, place um, so I guess this is not the one uh, the original power supply is used and I have noticed that we also have problem uh, with a micro drive I'm getting a TV signal out because I don't have the monitor cable uh, for the moment uh, the processor gets warm but not hot I'm checking the um, temperature um, with my hand and the components are warm enough the normal way but not hot not even the RAM chip so I don't know which one is which I guess I should try piggybacking uh, some of those one by one but if uh, there is more than one uh, failing then it's going to be tricky to spot the right ones of course uh, piggybacking is the quick and dirty method to spot the faulty chips but it's not reliable and um, for me it didn't work so I started with the first uh, IC8 from the lower bank of RAM chips uh, re start removing the chips I mean and I'm gonna go all the way first bank and I already have my broken trace here which actually is not broken just yet I, I can put it back in place with the socket on top of it and solder it right but uh, uh, the traces on the QL are hectic and very very thin you can see how thin those things are so be careful uh, with your traces the desoldering um, method it's of course up to you use always a desoldering gun uh, but um, yeah be careful with that um, because if this breaks then you are in trouble you have to create bridges underneath the, the PCB on the bottom side and do the uh, connections uh, again um, one by one um, so uh, at this point I'm lucky I can put it back into place and carefully put the sockets uh, on top of that and uh, uh, make the uh, solderings and everything will be fine again uh, piggybacking is not reliable but it works uh, for me it worked uh, many times in the past with uh, Sinclair Spectrums with uh, Commodore 64 etc but it didn't work for me uh, so far um, maybe I have to deal with more than one faulty chips so um, as I'm moving uh, all the way the first bank to uh, remove the chips and put sockets 
I had another mishap as you can see but again the trace uh, could be uh, put back uh, carefully and then the uh, socket on top of that and soldered right so I got all the uh, sockets that I need the lower bank um, I have removed the old chips I'm gonna put some new ones I did my best to um, put the broken traces back uh, the misplaced traces back uh, the right way so into the uh, soldering as um, the best way that I could and now I have to uh, put on the um, RAM chips the new ones and see if we have a success um, if not then I should move to the upper bank and do the same thing put sockets but first I will give it a, uh, another try and do the piggybacking uh, trick on the upper uh, bank of uh, chips uh, but maybe we are lucky and uh, it is not needed and it's going to be working um, because some of the lower bank uh, chips um, have been uh, damaged and and I guess that this is not my lucky day today so we have the same pattern on the screen I'm going to uh, go piggybacking the upper bank of the RAM chips now hopefully we can get it right and get it back uh, get back this old uh, QL um, in uh, working order so let's see okay so the uh, the fun fact is that uh, you can never be sure with any repair any fix um, with retro um, equipment from the past pieces of uh, hardware like this so uh, the lower bank as you can see we have replaced the old chips with um, new ones in sockets and um, just to uh, remind you I was going to check piggybacking the upper uh, bank uh, of the chips uh, because with a lower bank into place um, all the chips replaced uh, the machine didn't work so I started with uh, IC7 move to IC6 doing this piggybacking now as you can see there is a <laughs> a chip on top of the IC uh, the existing IC6 already and we have a picture so now it worked I mean it gives me sometimes a headache but it's the fun fact and the interesting part that you never know how the um, <laughs> any piece of hardware can react so our suspect uh, was um, IC6 from the very beginning I should check the chips that I have removed already from the lower bank if they are okay after all and so our damaged uh, chip has been removed carefully no broken traces this time and I uh, should put a socket and um, uh, call the RAM part a wrap because we have other things to do around this uh, PCB uh, we have to deal with uh, damaged or uh, faulty uh, micro drive as well and so here we have it everything in sockets lower bank one two uh, chips on the upper um, uh, bank uh, a heat sink on the processor I don't know if this is the right position I should try the other side because of the keyboard uh, the heat sink is always um, useful uh, especially on the um, microprocessor I should uh, replace the uh, ROMs uh, later that will be part 3 uh, with the Minerva ROM um, as um, I have just received that part and now we have to deal with the micro drive this micro drive uh, was spinning constantly so the machine now is out of power uh, off the grid um, and uh, this is an indication that is something wrong with um, the power or uh, something wrong with the controller the there is a chip behind there the the PCB which is part of the micro drive and I think it's called ULA again um, so this one is not connected for the time being uh, what I should do before we move to the uh, ROM part let's uh, check our options and what we can do about the micro drive uh, the faulty micro drive 
which uh, keeps uh, spinning constantly. And uh, what it looks like to me is we have to deal with some uh, power problem or uh, the ULA, this chip, underneath this aluminum case, uh, which is the logic behind the signals um, coming to the microdrive uh, for uh, reading and writing. So this one is a custom chip, is proprietary chip made for Sinclair. I'm pretty sure I can focus better. But um, this Ferranti chip uh, is not easy to be found. Not uh, to mention that it's going to be uh, quite uh, salty. I mean expensive. I can see very short legs here, shortened legs already. I bet there is no space to install a socket which is going to make the transplant uh, even uh, more difficult uh, but we we have uh, the ULA chip as uh, marked as um, case number one suspect number one this piece of Bakelite was um, in between the chip and the uh, aluminum case um, but um, the second thing we should uh, take a second look at is the 7805 voltage regulator right over here and I have already um, checked the voltages and it gives us 499 um, I mean uh, stabilized uh, precise and uh, so this could be suspect number two but the regulator works fine now the other thing the third thing uh, as we are making this list um, to troubleshoot uh, QL microdrives could be the uh, 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 the um, circuit which is uh, connected to onto the main the big uh, the main uh, PCB the, the motherboard so in order to check that what I have done is I have uh, swapped the micro drives one in the place of two and two in the place of one that one used to be micro drive two and um, the uh, micro drive that has been swapped uh, with this one uh, worked just fine in position 2 and this one uh, kept uh, spinning uh, constantly in position uh, for the micro drive one in the place of the other one so this means that there is no problem with uh, the circuit itself and according to the Sinclair QL manual it could be a couple of transistors um, but this is not the case I'm pretty sure of that I have checked that already so I guess this machine will be running with one microdrive until I can get the funds for myself to get an SD solution, an SD card solution or the V-Drive which is the, the ultimate solution for the Sinclair QL because I would like to um, this uh, machine, this particular one I would like to keep it for myself uh, so that's why I'm going to be replacing the ROM in a while and uh, try to upgrade uh, the um, total memory. And this is the extracted uh, video from uh, the manual. And uh, just to make sure that at least I'm going to have one microdrive to work with, uh, the working one back in the place of uh, microdrive 1 um, in its initial position, um, one single line of uh, basic code to be saved and then to be loaded back again and I think uh, we have a working and a single one um, micro drive in operation so we're good for now and I guess we can move to the third part of this video which is going to be the uh, um, Minerva uh, ROM installation which actually is a replacement a complete replacement for the operating system plus some um, toolkit uh, some uh, things you can do on top of uh, the existing functionality uh, for example uh, there is a fault detection and uh, especially a RAM test that you can conduct with this thing 
which apparently is uh, awesome and uh, very very useful. It comes in a little PCB with pin headers so that you can install the programmable ROM uh, onto the whatever socket you want to pick um, but uh, if you want the case to be closed right uh, everybody recommends to use the socket on the right. Uh, there is a glue chip on the side, there is a jumper to enable the toolkit and pretty much what it is it's a plug-and-play device and by the time we power up the QL again it should boot up using the Minerva ROM instead. In the meantime I did the same trick we do with the spectrums so I took the uh, let's call it composite uh, out uh, from the TV modulator so we can have better image I'm not calling this uh, a mod but it works just fine the way the same way uh, the great way it works with the spectrum so uh, let's um, plug uh, this um, uh, ROM and um, reset the QL that will be all it is needed because by the end of the day hopefully we should have 640 kilobytes of RAM uh, on the uh, machine as I bought um, an expansion for the RAM and a module which we have to test I really don't know if it works or not uh, it came to me as an again not tested unit so I'm removing the uh, existing ROMs the, uh, they are not the same the one on the left should be on the left the one on the right should be on the right so I I need to keep them um, with the same orientation some, somewhere and uh, let's fit the Minerva ROM now and boot up the machine um, uh, it should uh, tell us uh, that the time and date it's somehow uh, back in the past but um, supposedly this could um, support a real-time clock for the Sinclair QL and then it should, it should uh, uh, detect and report us that uh, 128k uh, of installed RAM are present now as I said before I need to put it on the right socket because it's much easier is the right thing to do in order to close the uh, computer case um, by the end of the day so um, just uh, stick it in the uh, right socket uh, technically speaking it's, it is the same thing but it, it, the case the keyboard wouldn't fit right so um, let's put it on the right side according to the instructions um, and uh, all the RAM that we have managed to fix and replace it today should be um, detected and reported as full 128k after all then we can fit the uh, keyboard um, which has a new membrane but it's not part of this video sorry for that and then uh, we can try the expansion for the RAM so here we are welcome to Minerva operating system uh, fully QDOS re-engineered that's what it is um, <coughs> and we can see that the date is back in 1965 I can leave with that for now um, the 128k identified and uh, we can now have support for dual screens I forgot to mention that uh, before I have now placed the old ROMs uh, in this bag so I can have a backup um, I have uh, replaced the membrane um, one interesting idea is to mark uh, those screws with a K like I did if you will because it's easier uh, not to mix them with the rest of the holes uh, made for the case and not for the keyboard so that certainly might be uh, useful to you um, and so um, yeah those are the 
uh, screws that might be in contact with the uh, Minerva ROM or the processor or the heatsink that I have foolishly placed on the uh, processor before. So I need to remove it and put it uh, the other way around and so the case can be uh, closed uh, nicely. Now this little guy, our uh, beloved uh, microdrive number two, I don't know if I should remove it completely or leave it there. Maybe I should uh, remove it completely and try to fix it uh, and leave the machine running with one microdrive only. Um, for the time being, I mean, and um, I should uh, probably uh, get the um, SD card solution so I can have uh, the classic microdrive and the uh, SD card solution uh, together or the V drive, that would be great. And I think it's time now to close the case. Uh, one of the hectic things we have to deal again is those cables for the LEDs the microdrive 1, microdrive 2 and on state um, in operation the on, uh, LED that indicates that the machine is powered on. Uh, it doesn't really matter which black is which because black is the ground so uh, it doesn't matter uh, which black you match with the rest of the cables which are actually the three LEDs um, for the drives and the on um, indication um, but uh, you have to do it right and if you don't know the right way to do it there is always this guide online um, so you can see uh, the right way to do it. I kept some notes but I also went over the internet and this guide I'm gonna show you in a while and it's right here so pin 1 black, pin 2 gray, pin 3 black again pin 4 white, pin 5 black again and pin 6 is red so you, know, you cannot miss it. Some other things I have found online are the uh, rubber feet. Some of the rubber feet from this QL were missing so I have ordered a couple of those and the guy also sent me some screws and a couple of warranty seals. The original stickers you can put on top of the screws and <laughs> I don't know where did he get those but anyways I'm going to just use the uh, rubber feet then we can test the memory module and I'm looking forward to testing this because it's going to be great if we can manage uh, to get uh, 640k of RAM um, alive on this machine. Uh, the plan for me is to get uh, at some point the ICE, uh, the graphical user, user interface or um, icon driven operating system as they used to call it uh, by Edersoft and um, connect the mouse and uh, work with that in the future um, so the machine should be able to host uh, more sophisticated uh, serious applications and uh, hopefully we can make um, some videos around uh, the applications for the QL um, so for now I'm gonna deal with a, with a rubber feet and uh, it will take uh, only a minute and then we can um, start uh, testing the... Um, actually I don't have to do much, I just have to plug the memory module on the side and see if it works then um, uh, hopefully it's going to be working but if it doesn't then uh, I should search around the circuit and uh, around the uh, chips and see what is happening. For now we have rubber feet on the QL uh, and uh, <laughs> feels like it's uh, actually getting almost as good as new. Um, before I could start with this uh, RAM um, detection uh, of the RAM fault in the first place, um, 
there were other things missing like uh, as I said the membrane was faulty and there were um, four keys missing so I managed to order three of those already along with the pillars um, already um, installed um, uh, but of course I need to find one key more and it will be uh, I mean almost good as new uh, nothing is missing um, I'm very happy and pleased with this machine uh, because it looked like it, it was in bad bad shape and now actually it's going to be my main uh, QL machine for uh, uh, any kind of test in the future. As you can see the microdrive one is uh, there, the second one I have decided not to um, install it, not at all and uh, yeah it's going to be my machine um, the main QL for whatever testing purposes from now on um, and I've, of course I have to find the CAPS key that is missing some screws as a surplus um, is always good to, to have um, so let's uh, get on with uh, the memory module test and this is the famous uh, expander RAM by Miracle Systems uh, famous and popular uh, memory module for the Sinclair QL back in the day. Two banks of 256 uh, kilobytes uh, and some glue uh, chips logic on the side. Um, at this point not much I can do. Um, I just have to really really uh, plug and pray <laughs> that it works and then of course uh, everything is socketed. I can uh, do whatever if needed I can uh, swap some chips and um, yeah but first of all let's uh, be crossing fingers here and uh, test it uh, it might be in uh, working condition let's see so the moment of truth reset and uh, wait for uh, the welcome booting message 640k indeed I didn't have to do anything that's good. <laughs> I love it like this. Um, and if you have noticed, um, the uh, boot up screen had, uh, has been uh, slightly delayed uh, because it went through all the 640 kilobytes instead of 128. So this is the RAM module inserted, uh, detected, identified and everything is good. So I think uh, the overall procedure today has been a success. I'm very happy. Um, of course, I, I have to live with one micro drive for the time being, but that's not a big problem. As I said, I'm going to look for options to go over some SD or uh, the V drive solution so I can combine both and I can have a wonderful uh, QL machine uh, in the lab and of course I need to find the missing <laughs> control key <laughs> but uh, I have high hopes that I will eventually soon um, so yeah I think uh, it was uh, quite a day uh, quite a fix and an upgrade for this little uh, guy and I strongly believe that this machine should have seen better days uh, out in the markets um, no matter the hardware uh, limitations or the butchered uh, Motorola CPU um, I think it was the micro drives that did all the uh, fuzz but anyways thanks for watching guys um, I'll be catching you soon with another video another repair upgrade demo or whatever um, if you haven't done that so please uh, do subscribe and um, share your ideas down below and uh, uh, whatever questions uh, via the email uh, whatever uh, tips hints and tips um, shared uh, experience for the QL whatever thanks for watching bye